Man, people are out here talking and pushing this new age thinking. It's a new millennium, you gotta get with the times. People keep telling me and talking to me and, and trying to get me to meditate and do some yoga. Um, oh. But I'm a little confused and conflicted because I'm a Christian. Should Christians be meditating and doing yoga or participating in new age thinking? Great question. Stay tuned today on this channel and on this video as we talk about the question, should a Christian meditate? What's going on YouTube and welcome back to Faith Like That, a Christian ministry that is dedicated to helping you live a clean life for Christ and to live that life abundantly. We want you not just to have faith, but to have applied faith working in your life, that kind of faith that can move mountains. So if you have not done so already, we would love it if you would connect with our channel and ministry. Please subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you know when our videos are coming out. Please connect with us here and on other social media platforms where we are. We would love to see you in all these places. All right, so again, the question is, should Christians be meditating? And I'm gonna ask you stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna to try to make it a quick one, but I want you to get all this great content that we have for you today. When we think about the concept of meditating, it is very similar to prayer itself. And Christians, should pray and the bible says you should pray without ceasing you should pray in the day you should pray at night but as similar as it is there's a few differences uh or at least one big difference in meditation and prayer i would say the first big difference i've noticed in meditation and prayer is that in one you are i guess a little bit more quiet than the other but this is what you got to watch out for is that in one in its original concept and, and setting, it has a different focus than prayer does. Let's talk about that a little bit more. So uh, in prayer, usually we're speaking. We pray to God. We go to church and we pray. We usually pray out loud at church and prayer can be a little bit more engaging there at church at home. Maybe when I pray by myself and I go off to my corner or on the side of my bed or in the closet, wherever you pray at, uh, usually not speaking out loud when you pray. Uh, there's, there's sort of an inward prayer there, but then some people also do speak out loud when they pray at home and at church, or even at church they pray inward. But usually prayer, there's some praying happening, there's some speaking happening, either inwardly or outwardly. There's noise and expressions being made and petitions being made, forgiveness being asked, and there's com communication happening there which I can't say that does not happen in meditation. But what I have noticed generally when I have meditated is that I, for the most part, was quiet and wasn't really saying anything. So to answer the question, should a Christian meditate? I think it may be healthy or a good practice to meditate as a Christian and to have this sort of contrast in your engagement with God and your relationship where there's times where you come to him and you speak and you petition, you ask for forgiveness, you tell him how you feel, but then there's other times you come just to be in his presence and focus on him and hearing from him and receiving from him anything he has for you. And you have a practice where you've learned to quiet yourself and listen to him. But now again, what you gotta watch out for with meditation is how you are meditating. Uh, I guess the way you've learned to meditate and what that focus is because uh, a lot of the new age thinking in that Eastern thought, they do worship other gods and they do believe in other deities or maybe they don't believe in God uh, the same way or they believe that they're a God and, and we have sort of this power or that the universe is bringing these things to us and, and that entity is not God. And those kind of beliefs are problematic for a Christian. Now again, you're grown. You can believe what you wanna believe. But if you're gonna say you're a Christian, I need you to understand that God is a jealous God and he does not like you worshiping other gods, believing in other gods, paying tribute to them or speaking to them or any kind of idolatry that comes with that new age thinking of believing in multiple deities, other deities or the universe. 
Yeah, God don't play, he's stingy. It is the belief that everything that exists was created and brought into creation by God and it all belongs to him. And I guess for lack of a better term, yeah, God is stingy. He don't want you messing with his stuff. Don't give his stuff to nobody else. He wants all the praise and the attention and, and the glory that comes from what he did, which is logical. If I did it, I would want the, the, the glory and the praise for it too. So again, there's nothing wrong with the Christian meditating, but make sure that you know what you're focusing on and who you're worshiping and what you're doing when you're doing this meditation. So as I talked about that, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of share with you how you can meditate as a Christian and to sort of talk about my process as I have meditated as a Christian. Generally, it doesn't happen every day. I don't meditate as a Christian every day. I pray every day or, or attempt to pray every day with the time that I have. Hopefully I don't fall asleep on the couch uh, and have that kind of moment or day. But to the best of my ability, I pray every day. Now, what's a good practice is for you to take time to learn to quiet yourself, to look inward to the Holy Spirit or to look to, to God in this meditation state where you're in a place and position in a posture where you're allowing him to come over and really show things to you that you're not taking time to look for or see otherwise. So after you get into that place where you've quieted yourself and you've listened and you and, and you just maybe taking time to calm down and to and to just kind of get into that posture and position and place where you're ready to receive something that you wouldn't normally to receive from God, then you start to pray and you pray to God. Or if you like, you can change that up and you could pray first and then put yourself in a position where you're ready to receive from God and receive from him. But when I have meditated, I have did these things together. Boy, let me tell you that the time that I have spent with God in meditation and I, I made sure I was ready to receive and my mind was quiet, my thoughts were quiet and, and who I was was kind of decreased to allow God to increase in me, that God showed me some things that were so helpful that changed my life, that changed my level of contentment, happiness, and joy, and it changed my relationship with him because he could show me things I, I usually didn't see before. This is key because God shows us his grace and mercy and speaks to us through his word, through nature and what happens in our daily life, sometimes through other people. And, and we even see in the Bible that angels come down or God has spoken to people in other times or the Holy Spirit speaks to people. And there's just different ways that God can speak to you. But most people in the hustle and bustle of everyday lives aren't in a position or posture where they can hear from God. Now, I don't know about you, but I've also been in the position where I felt the Holy Spirit coming upon me and or, or in my presence. And at church, usually when that happens, it's loud. People jump and shout and praise and, and do these things. But then other times, if you look in the Bible, when God showed up, when an angel showed up, it was scary and terrifying and people thought that they were gonna die. I've had experiences where I felt there was a, a spiritual being coming into my presence to share something with me, to show me something, or they were just gonna be there. And I'm telling you, it was terrifying. That the way it felt was like, oh, something is happening. I'm not sure what's coming, or, and I don't know what to do. And me, myself, I know I was closed off to receiving to what was coming because I was afraid. But when I go into meditation, I prepared myself and to be in a place for God and the Holy Spirit to come into that place with me and commune with me and share with me. So if you're having an issue receiving some of the things from God you need to receive because you're afraid, because there's blockage, because you're refusing it, the meditation is a great way to put yourself in a place to receive that, especially while you're making sure that you focus on Him. Now, if you don't know how to get yourself into a position or a place or a posture uh, to where you're quiet and meditating, then you need to get some help. Uh, what I did when I first started to do this was I used an app and I think it's the Calm app. And it's not really like a new age thinking app or anything like that. And they have, um, uh, right now I know they have a, a LeBron series. LeBron is talking about how he mentally prepares himself for games and performance. And it's just great. There's, there's segments on there about how to reduce anxiety, how to reduce stress, how to build confidence. 
and all these things or just or just even go to sleep and there's sleep stories you can use it is a great app uh, that I have used for a while now I, I do want to say this that I'm gonna try to put their picture up so you can see the app at least the icon of what it looks like uh, I do want you to know that they are not paying me I'm not an affiliate I'm not trying to take anything from them or infringe upon their copyright I am suggesting that if you don't know how to meditate that you try out calm now there might be a price with it uh, but it's definitely worth the price uh, if you would use calm at least to learn how to meditate I also invested in an Alexa meditation chair I think it's Alexa Alexia I'll show it to you this is my chair as you can see I don't know if you can really see the dimensions of it it's kind of big and shaped a certain way but I use it for meditation I take time to get into the chair and sit there and um, it, the, the chair really helps because uh, I don't know about you but I haven't been able to sit crisscross applesauce for a long time with, 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 with uh, out being very uncomfortable maybe cutting off some circulation so uh, I use the chair because it's cushioned it's comfortable but at the same time it allows me to be in a position where I'm not in the chair and I don't fall asleep while I'm praying and meditating. But but I can get into the chair, I can cross my legs, and I can sit upright in the position to really prepare myself to have an effective meditation and be there for an extended period of time without legs falling asleep or being extremely uncomfortable. So yes, I think it's okay for Christians to meditate as long as they're focusing on God and Jesus Christ and growing closer to Him, and you might see a difference in your relationship and your outlook on life from that experience. I do want to say again, thank you for taking time to spend with us today. I'm always excited when you come spend time with us on the channel. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel, hit that bell icon, mash that like button if you're still here. I know you liked it. And until next time, you all be safe and we'll see you soon.